Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, and tonight I'm going to go through the workflow on this uh, Jellyfish Nebula. Now for me this was uh, really cool because I did not use my own telescope for this picture. Uh, a friend of mine was going to be out of town over the holidays and he let me borrow his scope. And um, this is what he let me borrow. So it's a Takahashi TOA 130mm refractor. And uh, there it is on my EQ6. Uh, the, whole, uh, the whole telescope and associate gear is his. So he set this whole thing up. It had an EAF on it and it had a, um, a ASI 2600 mono with a full set of filters, uh, the astronomic filters, and uh, he had an off-axis guider in there as well. So I was able to just literally just take my telescope off, the, the 115, and pop this guy on there. And fortunately, we had a string of clear nights. So uh, that whole week, basically between Christmas and New Year's, uh, I was able to spend a lot of time with this scope. Now, I'll do a separate video at some point in the near future just to kind of give my thoughts uh, on this telescope. And I'll go over some of the... Uh, specs and and how well it worked on this mount and whatnot uh, but for now I just wanted to um, uh, put out the workflow video for this uh, for this target here so the uh, total integration time is uh, 29 and a half hours pretty evenly split between the three channels uh, one little um, uh, snafu in there the way he had his uh, filter populated was a little bit different uh, than <laughs> how I had mine. So uh, this right here, this is what the HA looks like. Uh, this one here, it says S2, but this is in fact O3. And we know it's O3 because um, this is the S2. And there's a lot more S2 signal uh, on this target than there is O3. Uh, so let's take a quick look at these. Um, yeah, I mean, stars look pretty good. If we go to the corners, they look pretty good. Uh, not a whole lot of cropping going on here, just uh, whatever cropping was necessary for stacking artifacts. In fact, um, the um, PixInsight um, uh, latest version of the uh, batch, batch, weighted batch preprocessing automatically crops them for you. So uh, we are getting some halos. And I am certain that this is coming from the astronomic filters because I've seen this type of halo before with uh, my astronomic filters. And there's one other person in my local group uh, that was getting these kind of halos. And uh, when he switched them out for chroma, the halos were gone. So, yeah, unfortunately, we got some halos here on this uh, uh, prior, right? That's the name of the star. Um, but I was able to get it mostly out. It wasn't super clean, but you guys will see how I worked that halo. But anyway, otherwise, everything else is looking really good. I mean, this is you know, straight off the stack, and the detail here is looking really nice. Uh, one of the reasons I picked this target, uh, there was no moon out. I probably should have focused on an RGB tar target, but uh, I wanted something that was going to be bright and was going to fill up the whole frame and uh, jellyfish I shot it a couple years ago with my 70 millimeter scope and um, and the uh, ASI 533 MC and I've been wanting to come back and revisit this target and this uh, field of view just seemed like a good opportunity uh, to get back in this one alright so let's uh, go through the workflow on this guy. I just did a standard SHO and that's what you're seeing here. Um, and again, not stretched, just using uh, the auto stretch to reveal this. Uh, we can get an idea of what this halo is looking like. And it was a real challenge to um, de-emphasize that halo. And there's even a reflection. It's hard to tell here but when you remove the stars, and even if you work on masks, it's like a 
it's almost like a mirror of the halo. So I'm pretty sure that this thing here is also an artifact. Uh, let's see, first thing I did is, after combining them is I did color calibration. I used the SPCC uh, color calibration and I did select the narrow band option for it. Then I applied a blur exterminator. Uh, so there, that's before Blur Exterminator, that's after. And if we zoom in on some of this detail here. There. So before, after. And then after Blur Exterminator, I ran Star Exterminator to take the uh, stars out. And of course, now we can see just how bad this halo is here. What I really wanted to do, though, on this target was pull out all of this. So it was encouraging to see that I did capture a lot of this out here. All right, so I did apply a stretch, and here it is with a stretch in there. And now what you're going to see is some curves work here. And what's going on here, let me make a clone and show you. So if I put my left mouse button over here on a dark area, Right, and I look over at the Curves Transform tool, I can see where the values are. And if you move this around, you can see where it is. So I'm trying to create separation between these really faint yellow areas and the darker areas. And so usually what I'll do is I'll like click in a dark area, and now I can see that, and I'm just going to pull back on this a little bit. Let me get the preview up. And then the area that I want to enhance is just up here and I'll move that up just a little bit. I usually try to keep it in the center here, right, because I don't want to blow out these brighter areas. And then it's just a matter of running this and you can see how it's it's creating separation between these really faint HA bits and the darker background. And so that's what's going on right now. And it's very subtle. It's, it's lots of baby steps. Now here, you see a mask. And what I'm trying to do is, is keep these areas from being impacted from additional uh, curves work. Let me hide the mask. Now, see this mask? This mask is covering this whole area. And what the reason for this is that uh, this is like, honestly, this right here, what we're seeing, this is like the third time I processed this image. What was happening is that while I was doing what I showed previously by trying to create separation here, making these dark areas separate from these slightly less dark areas, the dark areas here in the nebula were getting very dark because these are even darker uh, than this area here. And what was happening is that if you let these areas get too dark, then this part of the nebula starts to look like it's uh, hollow, like these are holes in the nebula, but, but they're not holes. This is actually dust uh, that's like in front of the nebula. So I didn't want to give the the nebula a hollow look and so I created this mask and uh, to protect this area while darkening the background here. All right, so you can see how the background is getting darker now but we're not making the dark regions of the jellyfish itself too dark. Now, uh, I took the mask off, you can see here, 
or here I reverted it, what was happening was that I left the mask on too long and it was starting the it started to look out of balance, right? So it's, it's. I mean, this is purely the taste, and this is purely uh, keeping an eye on things and trying to balance it. I didn't want this area to get too dark, but I also didn't want it to be too bright. So I want it to look um, natural. Kind of funny, given the, <laughs> the green color. All right, so we got another mask on here. And uh, this time we're doing some work just on these yellow areas. And what I'm probably trying to do, yeah, is pull back on the green and yellow and give this more of an orange look. Uh, the thinking here is that I'm using color as a way to distinguish uh, different structures in different regions and using a range mask gives you the ability to uh, use different shades of color to differentiate between the intensities. So this brighter area I want it to be a different color than what the rest of it is and uh, I'm kinda going for a goldish orange look. Uh, basically bring it closer to red and again it's it's all this is done with curves uh, I'm either using I'll bring bring curves back up I'm either pulling back on green a little bit or on uh, this one here uh, I'm pulling up towards red I mean this one is really strong it's very you got to be careful when using uh, you know this one or this guy over here because um, a little goes a long way. All right, uh, what's going on here? It looks like I'm working on the blue now. Yes. So if I had this scope for more time and, uh, and I had more clear nights, I probably would have spent a lot more time on O3 because you have little, little thin strands of O3 throughout this nebula. There's some over in here and you've got it on the edge here. And what I wanted to do was really enhance the blue and it almost looks like electricity <laughs> wrapped around this target, but uh, I think it takes a lot. Uh, what I had here, I wasn't able to really isolate it too much. I may have been able to sacrifice some of this green, but it, it the shade wouldn't have been right. I mean, this this right here is what I wanted to get more of, and there was plenty of it on the edges. So that's what this mask is here, is to try to enhance the blue and the way I'm enhancing the blue really I just increased uh, uh, curves just the general lightness of it and then uh, touch saturation a little bit yeah so okay now now I'm working on the um, on the halo there now there are a few different options for dealing with halos. I'm going to show one reference. I did not use this technique completely, uh, but if you want to be very methodical uh, and mathematical with dealing with halos, um, let me show this really quick here. Now this, it's an older article from 2015 by David Alt, uh, but it's still very relevant. And I've done this once. It's a lot of work, uh, but it really does a great job of dealing with of the halos and basically you're taking measurements of the size of the halo to uh, know how big the mask is and then you're getting samples of the uh, of the data in here and you're basically using pixel math to subtract it out and yeah there's the result um, so I didn't do that uh, but I did create masks now the better way to do it is usually to handle this in um, a halo like this with so many different colors in there is to actually split this out. Uh, you would hit this here, this uh, split RGB channels 
and then create separate masks and uh, subtract the halo out individually and then combine the colors back. Uh, and I did use that method uh, for one of my previous processing, but I was kind of lazy when I went through this, <laughs> went through it this time. And so I just made a couple of masks and let's see. And I actually, so you see it says blue mask. So this is the mask that I made on the blue channel. And uh, two different ones, right? Because you have two levels of intensity in this halo. And so anyway, with the different masks applied, I put this on here and then I pulled back on curves, both on brightness and mostly on green and red. And you can see uh, the impact of having that done. So, all right, you gotta be careful not to make it too dark. I didn't eliminate it completely, uh, but with uh, when the stars get put back in, it's 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 not very noticeable. This area kind of hung out. I used a clone stamp to clean this darker ring. Honestly, a, a better mask would have taken care of this ring here, uh, but but I just used clone stamp to clean it up. This part kind of stuck, uh, but it kind of looks like a lens flare, so I decided to leave it. Yeah, so there you can see the impact of clone stamp, right? So here, see how it's a little bit darker there? Zoom in a bit. And there, that's with clone stamp. I mean, it's not super clean, especially if you zoom in. You can definitely see the artifacts from clone stamp. But when looking at the image like this, it doesn't stand out too much. And like I said, once you put the stars back in, it wasn't too bad. Uh, let's see, now doing some more work. Uh, I think I may have used um, uh, Unchart Mass to kind of tighten up. Now let's take a look. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, right, now I've been trying not to push Blur Exterminator too far because you can definitely cook your image uh, with Blur Exterminator. Uh, but then on the on uh, then on the other side, you see how I have this mask. I like to sharpen up the higher intense areas. Uh, for one, they can handle the sharpening better because there's a lot more signal in here, and also it kind of promotes sort of a 3D effect um, to the picture. At least I think it does. So. Yeah, I uh, just used Unsharp Mask, uh, ch 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 Convolution, Unsharp Mask. And uh, basically, uh, you just, I pulled back on this slider from the default setting, and that was pretty much it. That's what this preview box is here, right? I always test in a preview first. Uh, but yeah, so there. It's subtle, but it's noticeable. I'll back it up again, so before Unsharp Mask, Keep train your eye right here, and with unsharp mask. Yep, see, it's a little. It helped. I mean, <laughs> looking at it from out here, you're not going to notice it really. But all right, so this is pretty much where I ended up with all the curves work and taking care of the halo. Uh, from this point on, it was a matter of working on the stars. So let's uh, pull those up. All right, so here are the stars. Let me back it up. Okay, so uh, as usual, I start with uh, arc sine stretch, and I give it a couple of stretches here with arc sine. And the main thing with arc sign stretch is that we don't want to blow out the core of the stars. We want to try to retain as much color as we can. Uh, now you can't push arc sign stretch too much and you're actually seeing, I did push it a little bit. You see how I got like these little points in the core? That's what happens if you go a little bit too far with arc sign stretch. So I decided I was liking the colors that I was seeing here. Uh, so. I went a little bit further with it. And then after that, you hit it with a regular stretch. And with the regular stretch, it's just simply a matter of 
uh, getting it to a point where um, where you're seeing enough stars and how big you want your stars. Okay, now you see what happened right here? No, uh, check this star out right here, this big one prior. Right, so this is after hitting it with uh, SCNR tool. And so we can already see how nice the color, and I'm talking about consistency right now, right? Not, not I mean, yeah, we got purple stars in here. Uh, but this is, this is a combination of arc sign stretch, and I think it's also a combination of the excellent uh, color correction of the um, Takahashi 130. Okay, so now we're inverting. We're going to use SCNR tool to subtract green, and we're going to invert back. And there. So here's our star colors. I mean, this is not bad for narrow band SHO stars, is it? I mean, even on prior, I actually really like that color. Uh, I tweaked the colors a little bit, and I wanted wanted to show off a little bit more, or not show off, but I wanted the stars to be a little bit more intense. And so I did add another, um, I think I just boosted curves just a tiny bit. Okay, so with that, it's just a matter of putting the stars back in, which is what we got here. I think this looks pretty good. I'm really liking the color of the stars. And you see what I mean? It's You can still see some artifacts left over the halo, but it, it to me it kind of looks like a lens flare, and so it, I'm not bothered by it too much. Uh, so I took this image into Photoshop and tweaked it a little bit more. So mostly you can see here the difference. So I use a contrast slider, uh, and I probably tweaked... Um, uh, the hue saturation, uh, saturation and the hue. Well, you can see a slight difference in the blue here. And uh, then after that was a matter of applying noise exterminator. And here we go. Here's our, our finished image. So, love to hear what you guys think of this one. It was a pleasure using that telescope for that week. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I could have had it in my hands longer, or better yet, maybe buy one. Uh, but they're well out of my budget. Those are very expensive scopes. Um, any comments on uh, the techniques that I used? Uh, maybe a better way of handling the halo? Uh, let me know in the comments. Color choices. Uh, even target selection, if, uh, if you had a Takahashi for one week uh, with no moon, what would you shoot with it? Alright, and so uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like and um, clear skies. <laughs>